So when you're shipping this out and when you're done and ready, make sure everything is in this one box. So sometimes your scans, you're really far out and you think that's your box or something. Make sure it's, it's, it's a very small quadrant. <laughs> so zero to one. So all the point 0.1, point 0.2, this, this box is what you need. And then also, uh, I've had several students go like this. They say image, UV snapshot, browse, let's, let's call it what it is. And, um, and then they wonder why nothing got turned in, right? Or they hit, or it, didn't, it didn't even let me do it. Um, you have to have something selected in order for you to snapshot it out. What if I had a face selected? Image, UV snapshot, overwrite. Which one does that turn in? So make sure that it all gets in quadrant one. Yep, look what happened there. I only had one face selected, so it only exported out one face. So make sure you're in object mode. Boop. Make sure you hit browse and make sure you, you send it to a place you know where you're sending it to, your desktop, your documents folder, whatever it is. Uh, choose JPEG. You don't need to be 4096. You could be 2048. How do I get the UV snap options? Uh, it's right here under image, UV snapshots. It doesn't even give you the option for options. It forces you to do the options. Okay, and now that's back to normal. Okay. So Sarah, do you have like a bit of a uh, of a UV map to play with for a second? Uh, all of my like cells are way too big for the like UV. So you just hit, you just right click UV shell, you shrink it down. Yeah, minimum amount of pixels you wanted. Um, it defaults to 2048, which is good, which is fine. Um, you could do 4096 if you want to say that you're doing it in 4K. It will might, you know, might make a little slower later when you get to rendering, but you might have more detail and less pixels. So 2048 is pretty good though. So just hit apply it. Yeah. I was doing 4096 just to see. John, how good's your Photoshop? John, sorry. How good's your Photoshop? All right. Okay. Do you understand getting out the UV shells? All right. Riley, did you get it out? Um, Photoshop. No. Did you get? Did you do the UV export? Image, UV snapshot. Make sure that you're in object mode and make sure that all your shells are in this first box. Ivan's good to go, right? They're close. All right. Okay. And then we're going to get on Photoshop. So my goal is, is that you um, have your Photoshop set up with layers and you're going to have some folders and I just want to give you some tips for coloring uh, and then uh, let you guys get back to work. Does your school account give you Creative Cloud? Do you guys yes. know? It does? So you could save to the cloud and it'll be on anything? I've worked at schools that don't give you Creative Cloud, so you have to sit. You don't save to the cloud, you save to the file. Oh, I don't, it gives you Creative Suite. I don't know if it gives you Creative Cloud. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think they, they're closing down the cloud. They're closing down the cloud? Yeah. It's probably gotten, yeah. probably some kids were putting on too much stuff. It's probably I too. Have, I have Creative Cloud, though. All right. Um, so I'll talk about um, making sure that you put your file, your PSD file, Make sure you upload that to Google Drive when we're done. And I, I don't know who Mary is, but I'm, I'm on Mary's account. Is a flash drive okay, too? 
Flash drive is great. Oh, okay, but you're on your laptop, so you don't need. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually not going to create a new, right? So when I have one that I like and I have Photoshop open, I can just right click and choose open with, and I'm just going to choose Photoshop. Or just open. open Photoshop and click new file to open. Yep. Um, I like it this way because it, it, it contains everything. It makes it the right aspect ratio. Is it that dark on your screen or is it just the It's the 4K screen? version. If I go to this other version, I'll do this one. I'll do the two, there, that one. They're very fine lines. Do you want me to turn the lights off? No, which version is this? That you to this one's 2048. The 2048 one's actually thicker than the 4096. Okay. So get Photoshop on your screen, and I want to review a few things. Ben, you got it on Photoshop? Yeah, it's loading up. Yeah, excellent. Reagan, you get Photoshop open? Yeah. yeah. Jamar, how's your Photoshop skills? Jamar. Oh, they're good. All right. Yeah. So I have mine open, but everything is all like checkered. Did you do a PNG? Yeah. That's right. You're, you're a transparent. If you did a PNG instead of a JPEG, that means you the black layer is an out the black color is an alpha color, which means it's transparent. Well, Do you all know that RGB A? Do you guys know that what A is? A is alpha and A is transparency. Okay, let's try. So it. instead of having black, you have alpha. It's the alpha layer. Can I do that? Can I just close you all? Close tab group. Do. Close tab group. Boo. Boom. Can I close? Close tab group. Boom. Okay. Now. Right. Are you getting it in Photoshop? Yeah. Maybe. Good. Cool. Okay. <coughs> I'm willing to bet money. There's no way to prove it, so you can't win the bet. You can't, you can't prove it, so there's no way of actually winning this bet. I'm willing to bet money that there's someone in here that's better in Photoshop than me. Okay? Photoshop is huge. There's a lot to cover in Photoshop. Um, I like to and give the analogy of, like, let's say Photoshop is, like, the continent of Africa. And I know Egypt. I know Egypt really well, but is that to say that I know Africa really well? No. No, right? There's so much more to Photoshop than just like my little things. So I'm gonna, I might, this is why I like to say it. I'm gonna do things a certain way, which are functional for me as how Photoshop relates to Maya. There are probably other ways to do what I am doing. I would love to hear them after my, after my demo or in an email. Um, so sometimes I, I pick a few things up here and there. Um, sometimes like using the, uh, the, the photo mask, this thing, that's actually cumbersome for what I want to do sometimes. And so sometimes I will not do the proper way cause I want to do it a little faster because I, I know I won't care about the, the, the actual properness of it when the thing's all done. Okay. So for example, to make a new layer, I can use this plus sign, right? I can hit Command Shift N, or I can go to File New Layer. And I hop between all three, depending on where my mouse is, depending on my mood. The big thing you're gonna need to know is layers, right? Um, let's just review the tools really quickly. Um, these are all out of order. Okay, um, so this little plus sign and the layers, 
zoom is command plus and command minus. If I hold the space bar, I get the hand, and that's kind of like holding alt middle mouse click in Maya. If I hold the space bar, it'll turn into a hand and I can grab and shift slide it around. Um, the spill bucket or the gradient tool is what I'm gonna be using to fill a lot of colors. I believe that's the, the hotkey for that is regular old G. I'm gonna be using the smudge tool and I don't know the hotkey for that one. I'm gonna keep pressing it. And then I use a lot of the selection tools. Uh, with brushes, unfortunately, B holding B and M doesn't work. The brackets, everyone look at, find the return key on your computer. Right above it, there's a square bracket. That'll make your brush size bigger and smaller. And let's start with opacity and blend modes for layers, because that's what's going to give us our first feature, which is making the top layer a stencil layer, or, or like a, that, that layer so we can still see the UV shells on top of everything we're cooking. Does that make sense? All right. So let's set this up, start painting, and then let's be done. So first thing I want to do, I'm going to do a save as file, save as, and I'm going to, if I get this option, I'm going to save it to my computer and then upload it. If you have cloud to work, you could save to the cloud and it'll follow you where, as long as you're signed into to your Adobe, that will do it. But to be safe, I'm going to do it the, the old way. I'm going to save it to my computer. I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it Ahsoka Low um, Res UV Map Color. Um, do call, put color somewhere in there because you're going to have, oops, and we want to make it a Photoshop file. Photoshop file. Boom. 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 Desktop. Save. Bam. All right, that's the file I'm gonna to wanna to put on cloud or my hard drive or email it to myself or whatever it is. All right, let's make two layers, two new layers. I'm sorry, let's make one layer. I'm sorry, one layer. I'm gonna use this plus sign down below or I can hit command shift N. First layer, I'm gonna call base colors. My basic colors. Okay, I'm gonna go over here to my color picker. I'm gonna choose this color, boop. Uh, Ahsoka's skin is rather orange in the cartoon. Like a dark, deep orange, something like that. You think redder, I, I, knew, I knew there was gonna be that. that Bit more up. I, your, my color looks different than that screen. You think, you think that, that? A bit darker. No, it's, no, no, I mean like towards the upper red. Okay, that that it looks different. That looks different on my screen. My screen, the, the the colors aren't the same. You're gonna trust me, Ben. Okay. Sorry, I'm. Right. No, 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 no. I I knew I knew what I was getting into when I made a Star Wars character. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna hit the brush tool. I'm just gonna keep it simple, and I'm just gonna do a circle around her head. This is why we like UV mapping, because you don't even have to have passed kindergarten, because we can color outside the lines. In fact, it's encouraged. Can you come now, the make sure, yeah, yeah, make sure that you're on the right layer. So I made a new layer called the base layer. This is where 90% of the problems lie in Photoshop. When someone says, teacher, I have a problem, 90% of the time, someone's just not on the right layer. So you just gotta be mindful of where you're at here. I'm gonna use, now I'm gonna use the spill bucket. So I'm gonna go down, 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 down. Remember in, this is why I wanted to do this, in Photoshop, you have hidden tools. So the gradient tool is the cool thing where it gives you like that, that blend of colors. A spill bucket tool or the paint bucket tool is hidden underneath there like so. I still have my correct color selected. I'm gonna color all that in. It looks like if I went there, and it, it, it gives you that border once, and if I click it again, it supersedes that border. There's a yeah. better way to do that. I'm sure there is. I wanna hear it at the end of my lecture. Like I said, there's a thousand ways to do this. I'm showing you one way. Yes, Ben. 
some reason my paint is coming a bit like a bit soft along the edges that are kind of transparent. That's probably your your brush your brush type, which I will get to in a second. All right, I'm going to do the same exact. I'm going to repeat with white. So she's got these. Her headdress is white. So I'm going to again go to my brush. That's this one right here. I'm going to now I have my white selection. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go whoop. Something like that. If I wanted to do these blue and then, then do the inverse, I could do that too, but I'm going to just make them all white. And I'm just doing it. And we are relying on the UV, the UV lines to kind of cut themselves off in, in, in Maya and then not care about. It. And again, I, same layer even because I'm calling it base color. I'm going to use the spill bucket. And I'm going to go, boop. And I get this border. If I click on it again, it spills over it. So click once, it gets everything to the border. And then click again, it'll spill over it. One more time, bam. OK. I'm going to hit Save. Maggie. Um, just because I've run into this problem before, and I really know how to deal with it. Uh, Yeah. Separate parts of the map. What do you do to line them up? Is it just something you have to do afterwards? Or? With the shells? I don't, like if she or in Photoshop. Like, Photoshop or Maya? Photoshop. If she had something like a line going from her face. I got you. I got you. Okay. I got you. Okay. I got you. Normally, I don't do this for the head. When I do my characters, when I teach the 420 class, I do what's called a stencil layer. So let me, let me see if this answers your question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the background layer. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to call it stencil. Stencil. Like that. I'm going to go back to my background layer. I'm going to use the magic wand. Where's my magic wand? Magic wand. There it is. I'm, with my background layer selected, I'm going to select anywhere in the negative space. Boop. I get this wonderful selection of outside every single UV shell. I'm going to go to my stencil layer. I'm going to pick a color I know is never going to be on my model and is bright. Green, like a bright green, right? She wears blue. Maybe someday she'll wear purple. I don't think she's ever going to wear a bright green, right? So now on my stencil, so I made the selection on my background layer. I go up to my stencil layer, go back to that spill bucket, and now I get this, what I call a stencil. So now, check it. If I wanted to select that horn, or whatever they call these, what do they call these? I don't know. Oh! A crown? You, you, you knew the species. All right. All right. So now, call it crown. like, okay. if, if I grab a, a box here, right, it's grabbing each box. So if I go to my UV map, if I grab a box, my, UV, uh, my wand here is only selecting that. But if I go to my stencil layer, Command D, get off there. If I go to my stencil layer, it gets the entire piece, and then another layer, whatever I spill bucket will only be that part. Or if I do a brush pattern, even like if I I, I can do a lot right now. I, I get some sort of brush pattern happening, and then I can kind of do that. Ooh, wrong color. Let's just do. Let's change it to blue. Something like that. And now watch. I can even hide the stencil layer. It's cutting itself off at that selection even. Is that what you wanted? Oh. You wanted to select a pattern and what? Uh-huh. You have to transport it. Yep. How do you, like, line up couple, the... couple ways, very carefully. Just... Very carefully. Um, the clone stamp is going to be another trick, which I will show you, uh, and a few more things. Right. Um, okay. 
Sidetrack. So that's how you do a stencil. If you have lots of pieces like John, this stencil layer might be good for you. Sarah, who's gone, this stencil layer might be good. Riley, you got enough simple pieces. You probably don't need that. You can do more like this. Ben, you could probably just do something like that. I imagine for Ahsoka, probably what they did. Well, let's not worry about Ahsoka. Right. All right. I was just theorizing how they did all the patterns on her face. Oh, well, we'll, we'll get there. Um, I think maybe what they did was they separated those patterns from the rest just to determine which spots would be white, which would be blue, which would be orange. Yeah. And they paint. They, someone probably painted or designed the face part. All right. Um, let's let's talk about that. So I do want to give her. She has some very distinct markings on her forehead and cheeks. So I'm going to need to know exactly where to paint, right? So we need to make this layer on top. This is where everyone forgets. So to make this layer on top, I'm going to go right click, duplicate layer, and this time I'm going to call it uh, UV shell. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to pull that to the top. Does anyone remember the blend mode that we like to do this? So right now, it's, it's visible. And I want to make the black transparent and the white opaque. Does anyone remember? It's right here. So don't do this. Don't grab your opacity. Cause that's actually going to darken the colors. So don't do that. You're going to go here where it says normal and you choose screen. Now I do have a problem. My white, I have white lines and I have white color, right? So I might want to make this all blue so I can see it. Um, I have some strategies. I'm going to do that. But now I have my UV shells, a top layer. I can see through the black, but the white lines remain. So this is called screen. Everyone look up here. And Sarah comes back, remind me to show her. <coughs> the last thing you want to do, because Photoshop sometimes thinks that you want to select your top layer. Like if I'm grabbing something or painting something, it'll say, oh, you wanted to move that? And like, no, I didn't want to move that. Um, so you want to lock it. So I click this top layer and I'm going to choose lock. Okay. And now you're ready to go. So put all of your new layers between here, I'm going to keep making new layers. So I'm going to, that's the wonderful thing about Photoshop. Because if I mess up on her eye patterns, I can hit the plus sign, make sure it's below that layer. And now I can go to brush here. Uh, ben, the transparency on your brush might have been from the brush type. I mean, actually, Yeah. Um, you can also do other stuff. Like if I wanted like some more jaggedy type lines, there's a lot of different brush types to kind of go over. Um, so if you wanted something a little bit more blotchy, you could do that. Like her, her, her blue lines, I might use this brush. For her markings, I'm, I'm gonna try this right now. I have no idea if it's gonna work. Um, there's more things you can do in, let me go back here. I can actually change the angle of the brush and I can actually make it 3D. So I'm gonna make it a little skinnier and angular. And it's a little small. I'm going to use the, my brackets to make it bigger. Or I can make it bigger up here. And I got a new layer. I'm going to call it markings. Let's just see how that looks. Let's go. Oop, I didn't want blue. They are white. Um, I know they're, I know Ben, I know what you're going to say. They're geometric and I should make them sharper lines. And I do know that. Something like that. Someone might ask, how do you make them symmetrical? I can duplicate the layer and flip it. Let me do that. Let me just do one side. So if these were her markings, I know I'm doing a very bad job. Let me make that smaller even. Are you screaming inside, Ben? All right. So that, let's just I pretend mean, those I, are her markings. I, I would be doing a shoddy guesswork myself. All right. All right. I'm gonna look it up later and do it. I would need a reference right. picture, like 100%. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and then I can flip it by going to Edit, Transform, and I can uh, where's flip, flip horizontal. Boop. I think there it is, and and now I have two symmetrical parts to it. All right. 
Let's get to, to your part. Uh, Sarah, yes. to get your lines on top, like how I can see through it, uh -huh. you duplicate your background UV layer, you change it to, you gotta, you're going to change it to screen, and you're going to lock it. That's, that's the key part. Okay. Are your Photoshop skills good? Oh, great. May, is it selected as an object? It's selected. All right, I'll be there in a second. That's what you get for making such an awesome model. All right. Um, what so, <laughs> is, that a, is that the good blue? I'm going to, just to show, just to answer Maggie's question, I'm going to make it a blue base. I, I'm, I'm normally going to make it a, there you go, just so you can see the lines, right? Okay, so Maggie's question was a good question. How do I know where, if something overlaps from the edge of one place into another, um, we're gonna put it on our model so we can kind of count. There's a couple things we're gonna do. One, we're gonna paint and guess. Two, I can show you the clone stamp which will make an exact copy of a pattern somewhere else. And then three, you're gonna put it on the model Make sure it's lined up. Maybe recalibrate it and then put it back. So there's there's three strategies to that, right? There's no tricks. The clone stamp. Do you know the clone stamp? The clone stamp is helpful. Another thing to do though might be more work is you just make get everything one color in this one, then you go back maybe make a new UV map that show that has all the parts with the uh, painted tattoos and everything. Yeah, yeah. Just do yep. it in Photoshop, memorize where those parts are, and just change the original uh, one painted one. That is, that is something you can do too. There's, again, right? So, like I said, your skills are going to be just as good as mine for this part, which is great. So I'm going to do white lines now. And this is the edge of her piece. So I'm going to go, Woo! what happened there? I'm going to go up here to, oh, is it transparent? Let me check this out. Size, size is good. Is there transparency on this layer? No. Is there transparency on my brush? Strength 90. Yeah, yeah. is that gonna do it? Go to white. I'll make sure I'm on the right layer. Make a new layer. I can call this uh, cone markings. I'm just gonna do a straight brush, just just to kind of have something. I'm gonna go back to, let's do, let's do that for right now. I'm on white. Brush. Why aren't you brushing? Oh, I did the wrong thing. <laughs> Get on the brush tool. Switch that. Go back to that. So that there. Boop. Boop. I'm just doing random guesses right now. These are gonna be a little smaller. That's the top of the horn. Is the top of her horn white or blue? Blue. So I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. Go something like that. Just guessing. And then this one. Oh, geez, what happened there? I don't even know what trick I did. And then this one. And again, it's great. You can color outside the lines. All right. Um, when I want to attach it, let's. Oh, I got to do a few more things here. Let's just do here. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. Let's do here. Change the brush size. Okay, this is what you're doing for homework. All right, so you're gonna paint, explore different brushes, um, use the spill bucket. Uh, the smudge tool lets you do details like this, like especially if you're doing more realistic skin tone. That's a pretty strong brush smudge. So I could smudge it just so it looks a little bit less straight and gets her 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 stripes are a little bit more organic right so you can kind of push and stripe them out um, when you're ready to see it on your model hit save hide your UV shell layer make sure you hide that make sure you save it after hiding that UV shell layer and now I'm gonna go add a new UV layer. So I'm going to right click, assign favorite material. Uh, we're eventually going to get the thong. Um, 
If you don't want it, we're not thong yet, but we're eventually going to put on a thong layer. I'm going to go to color. I'm going to ch checkerboard box. I'm going to go down to PSD file. I'm going to go to image name folder. I'm going to go to my desktop. There it is. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to hit select. I'm going to hit close. And then I press six. Press six. There it is. Ooh, that does not look right. This, I believe, one of these is on that should not be on. What is on that should not be on? No. Oh. All right, fine. I'm going to do this. Wow, it's fine. Like right? <laughs> I'm going to start layer. I'm going to, I'm going to try this. Oh, I know what happened. I had this. <sighs> reset the reset. Uh, load presets. Default. Select. Close. I'm going to try regular file. Go to my attribute editor. What happened? Go to my attribute editor. Go all the way over here. Let's do edit, delete by type history. It's because Riley's packing up. It's throwing me off my game. Let's see what that does. There it goes. All right. Just do file. Um, do file. That, I mean, I want I want more, but for for a random guess of where things were, that ain't bad. Ah, so this part, right? So I'm, I'm just going to take mental notes. I'm going to, you can also do a screenshot even. So this edge, I'm going to hit W. So this edge and this edge need to be the same, right? I can even zoom in and screenshot that so I know. Command shift four. So that guy and that guy. So I know I'm going to need to line those up better. Does that make sense? So you just kind of take mental well. notes. Um, yes. So what I'd like you to do. We have 15 minutes uh, for homework, or you can get started on right now. Play blast this and put this as a whip. Work in progress. So play with it. Play with brushes. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, we are going to, I'll give you more coloring tricks and tips next time. And then we're going to make a bump and a specular map for us to put on as well. So does everyone, before we go, does everyone know what a bump and a specular map are? No, no? they yeah. have to deal with stuff on the faces, so, like scars, freckles, and stuff. Yes. So you have a color map, which does color. And then let's say I actually wanted to give her a ridge for her brow right here. I can make an artificial set of what appears to be more geometry, but really it's just an artificial bump. But it looks like a very realistic bump. If I wanted to give her a scar, that's called a bump. And then a specular map is shiny and dull. So if I wanted to make her horns a shinier part than her head, those can be dull parts, right? So if you have some blood, if you decide, and this is why I always, this is why I put this on, on our thing, where I put, one more, um, the color is gonna drive the bumps. So if I put a blood dripping down on it, right? I'm gonna make the blood kind of pop out a little bit because blood's kind of thick. And then blood, and then the bump and the blood is going to drive the shiny part, right? So I don't know if you know this, right? We have shinier parts on our skin. Some parts are more oily. Some parts are less. There's all these different things happening to us, which cause us to be a little bit more shinier or diffuse. So that is next week. So bump maps are great because it allows you to kind of add modeling for very cheap. By cheap, I mean lots of you have like all those pixels, right? You can actually draw on a lot of those details and they kind of bump out. Scars, stitches, all that stuff. We'll talk. So we're going to do a lot of Photoshop next week. Very, the only thing we're going to be doing with Maya is putting it back on and kind of checking. So if you still need to work on your UV set, I'm here to help. Or you can do that at home. If you're ready to start painting, make sure that you ship this file with your UV map. Um, there and then just don't forget it's screen and don't forget it's locked. Whew. I have finished 10 minutes early. Feel free to sit here and work and ask questions. Feel free to get out of here. No judgment either way. Yeah. See you next week. Stop recording.